Ten Soviet army officers clashed with demonstrators outside the Latvian parliament this morning. The soldiers were attempting to enter the building and confront the leaders of what they consider an outlaw government. The army sent a message today that independence will not come without a struggle. We support the re-establishment of Soviet law, this army officer declared. Latvian leader Anatoly Gorbanov agreed to meet with the uninvited soldiers after threats that they would occupy the parliament. The officers demanded that Latvia hold a republic-wide referendum on independence. And as a show of force, they said that soldiers tomorrow will block entry to the Latvian parliament, shutting down the new government. This morning was an attempt to come in, in, this, in, in, in our building and to organize their own rules, organize their own order in the parliament. It means it was a violence. They have used violence. The army's action follows a letter sent to Latvia's government from the head of Soviet forces in the Baltics who last week condemned the separatist movement. The letter threatens to use military force to protect Soviet interests in Latvia. They're trying to intimidate and disrupt parliamentary process and the process of democratization in the Republic. These are conservative forces, well, uh, forces that are afraid to lose power and their privileges. In an effort to head off confrontation, Latvia's parliament is sending a five-man delegation to Moscow tonight. But sources have told CBS News that Moscow will not talk. From the beginning, Latvia has offered major concessions to the Kremlin in exchange for recognition of statehood. Late today, pro-Soviet leaflets were scattered around the capital city of Riga, urging citizens to rise up tomorrow and overthrow the newly elected parliament, whose leaders, the leaflets say, are traitors. Peter Van Sant, CBS News, Riga, Latvia. Underlying Gorbachev's troubles is his failure to turn the economy around. Ever since he was elected president in March with expanded powers, he has been promising... ...suffering Soviet consumers who have spent a lifetime listening to promises that the shells will soon fill up are getting what they have always gotten, another round of excuses. Mikhail Gorbachev's major economic reforms are in trouble. His hastily revised program is behind schedule and many of the toughest measures, including an end to state subsidies, sliced out. The call to retreat was apparent when the Soviet Prime Minister told the nation this weekend there would be no so-called shock therapy to end seven decades of a centrally planned economy. Shock therapy that would send prices sky high and put thousands out of work. Soviet leaders worried such strong economic medicine would bring about open revolt. Would it be approved the next day there would be you know, it could tell all over the country. The problem, people don't want to give up their cheap prices in a land where a loaf of bread costs about three cents, where a streetcar ride is less than a penny and a phone call costs even less than that. And the government is still charging rent on state-owned apartments based on rates set in 1926. To change all this means abolishing state subsidies and accepting higher prices, unemployment, and uncertainty in a country which has always guaranteed cradle to grave security for its people. To make all these adjustments and get to a market economy, I'd say a generation. Gorbachev's reform program is in such disarray that even though it is due before this nation's parliament next week, insiders said tonight his top advisors are still rethinking and rewriting. Barry Peterson, CBS News, Moscow. What President Gorbachev gets to see outside of Washington, D.C., if anything, on his summit visit, has not yet been nailed down. But there's talk now that, among other places, he may be taken to Minneapolis and San Francisco.